Hey guys, this is Kendall Terry, and this is a look at mitosis in cell division. Now, when you're looking at mitosis in cell division, the first thing that might come up is, is uh, kind of what's going on. Well, mitosis is technically the splitting of the nucleus, but for biology's sake and purposes, we just look at it as cell division. And this is what a lot of people look at. For instance, they look, they think about maybe a developing embryo, which you see here, which is kind of what you look like as you develop. They may think about, for instance, like the leopard gecko. I had one of these when I was in college. And they may think about, you know, that tail that they can throw off and then grow back. Um, they may also think about a scab that, you know, you get a bruise or a scab on your knee, uh, maybe you fail or whatever. And uh, that scab heals back and eventually the skin grows back. And depending on the injury, it may look as if it never happened. And the body's ability to do this, all three of these uh, happen by cell division. And that all occurs by the use of mitosis. So let's get into this. To start, really, we have to understand the difference between haploid and diploid. When we're talking about haploid and diploid, we're talking about the amount of chromosomes that are present inside of a cell. So there's two distinctions. There's haploid, which uh, is just one set or one copy of the chromosomes. For instance, uh, in this case, you can see there's one purple one, one red one, one yellow one. So that is considered to be a haploid cell. They have one set of chromosomes. Now, the haploid cells that we have uh, in us are, for instance, the sperm cell and the egg cell that you see in the picture. Each of those has one set of the chromosomes. The sperm is the one set from your dad, the egg the one set from your mom. As those come together and unite, they make the cells that are going to make up the rest of our body. And those are diploid cells, or 2N. You can see here there's two copies of each of the chromosomes. Now, if we look at our cells, we have 23 uh, uh, chromosomes in the sperm, 23 chromosomes in the egg to make a total of 46 chromosomes in our body cell and you can see that here here is what we call a karyotype or a picture of all the chromosomes that you may find in your in in one of your cells depending on whether you're male or female uh, right here's the difference between the designation here's the x and here's the y this is a female xx for the female this right here is the male x with a y so depending on which one you are that will be what your what we say the 23rd chromosome is we number them based on uh, length. This is the longest one. We call it number one, number two, three, four, so on. When we dye them, we add a dye to them so we can see them in the cell, we see these banding patterns appear. And these banding patterns, you can think of those as representing the genes on a chromosome or on your DNA. So we've talked about DNA before, and you know that DNA is made up of uh, genes or, or codes for proteins. So you can think of all these little banding patterns as different uh, proteins. So really, when we look at this, we've really just touched the tip of the iceberg, so to speak. There's a lot that goes into that cell division, and that's what this whole lecture is about, is, is actually what happens. So to understand that, first we want to look at, at what we call the cell cycle. The cell cycle is made up of different, uh, you might think of them as checkpoints along the way as your cell uh, starts. Now, since we're talking about mitosis, we can start there and say that's where the cell splits. So you got one cell that starts and then mitosis happens and now you have two cells. Each of these cells will now go through the cell cycle. The first phase that they enter is called the G1 phase and that's just the first growth phase. The cell just grows. Some cells, like your muscles and nerves, will go to what we call a G0 phase right there and they won't ever do anything else. That's, that's where they're stuck. Um, they don't ever divide again. They, they're there and that's why if you damage a nerve cell it's so hard uh, to maybe get feeling back or, or a movement back because those cells never reproduce. They're, they're done. After the G1 phase, we have what we call an S phase. S phase is where uh, the DNA will divide, uh, and we talked about that through replication. Then you'll enter a G2 phase. A G2 phase is the second growth phase. This is where the cell prepares for mitosis to take place. It gets bigger, and then... Uh, it enters into mitosis. Now we group G1, S, and G2 into a phase that we just call interphase, some, and designated by the I here. 
And so that phase is just the normal growth and development of the, of the cell. Most of your cells in your body right now are in an interphase cell or in an interphase uh, step where they're just looking like normal cells. Once a cell enters the S phase right here, at that point, it is preparing to divide, although it won't look necessarily any different until we get to mitosis. Before we do that, though, what we need to understand is the chromosome. That's a term that I'm going to use several times here as I explain mitosis. This is a chromosome here. You can, it, it's got, this is one part of the DNA. It's connected here at the middle called the centromere. And here's another identical copy of the DNA. Number one here identifies just one half of this chromosome. So if we focus a little bit more on it, if you would draw a line right here in the chromosome and you would separate this half from this half, what, what you have there is what we call sister chromatids. And sister chromatids are identical to each other. So a chromosome is made up of two sister chromatids connected in the middle right here called the centromere. Now we use that term chromosome, but what does it really mean? Well, if you take chromosome and you start to unwind it or unfold it, you'll, un you'll eventually get down to these proteins that have the chromatin wrapped around it. And when you analyze that chromatin in depth, you go even deeper, you end up then with this DNA. And inside of that DNA, of course, are those nucleotides that we've already talked about that are made up of genes that have codes on them for proteins. So you go from DNA they wind around these proteins called histones, and then those histones start to wind up and, and bunch and bunch and bunch until eventually you get these shapes that look like X's that we call chromosomes. So now let's look then at mitosis. So in mitosis, here's the whole phase cycle. It, it, it's not necessarily a step where it stops and looks a certain way. Okay, it actually will go from one to the next to the next to the next. And it kind of proceeds kind of like a movie, um, more so than necessarily a phase that has a beginning and an ending. It's kind of this whole morphing the whole time. Um, and you can think of the phases as interphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, cytokinesis, I-P-M-A-T-C. And uh, there's a, a couple different ways that you might be able to, you know, mnemonic devices you might be able to come up with. But let's look at these now individually. So the first is interphase. Remember, interphase is G1, SG2. It's just a normal cell with all of its stuff there, and it's ready now for division. So now you go into prophase. In prophase, of course, you can see the nucleus has disappeared. Uh, we say that the nuclear envelope dissolves. The chromosomes become visible. You can see them. Um, I like to think of it as you can see all your X's because sometimes that helps people remember that. Um, the centrioles, that's these yellow things here on the end, in animal cells, animal cells have these, plants do not, the centrioles will move to opposite sides of the cell, creating poles. And then spindles, which in this case are these little white lines here, will grow from those spindles out like projections like this and start attaching to the centriole, the centromeres, sorry, the centromeres of the chromosomes. So they, the spindles start attaching to the chromosomes. Then you go metaphase. In metaphase, they simply, you can think of M means middle um, or where they meet. They will line up right on top of each other in the middle and the spindles, notice, are connected to them. And the spindles are kind of what's going to move them around this whole process. Then you have, sorry, then you have anaphase. In anaphase, those, the centromere splits and the sister chromatids are pulled to opposite poles. So that chromosome, remember, was made up of two sister chromatids that were identical to each other, connected at a centromere point. They will split now and be pulled to opposite poles of the cell. Then we have telophase. The nuclear envelope will start to reform and the cell will elongate and prepare to divide and the chromosomes will uh, unfold. But then you go into cytokinesis where you start to get a pinching of the uh, cytoplasm or simply a division of the cytoplasm. And finally you end up with two identical daughter cells. Both of these are diploid. They have, um, in your case, each of them will have 46 chromosomes in them and they are identical to each other. At least that's the goal assuming no mutation has taken place.